Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And just the other day, Dragonflight Season 4 release date has finally been announced. Mark your calendars because in three weeks we'll be getting the final season of this expansion before any of the War Within content. Now's the perfect time to start prepping for Season 4, as certain rewards from Season 3 will be going away with a brand new season, but also certain activities that are doable in Season 3 right now might actually be a little bit harder to do for Season 4. So this video is going to go over some of the things that you should start working on right now over the next few weeks in order to help you get your characters prepped before the new seasonal content, but also highlight which rewards are going to be removed or rotated out for the Dragonflight's final season so you can obtain them now before they are permanently gone. But right before that, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight Patch 1026, 1027, Season 4, or any of the future War Within updates. I first want to start off by going over some of the rewards that are going away with Season 4, starting with Mythic Plus content. For M Plus Season 3, we have the Verdant Armoridon that you can still earn up until Season 4, where it's going to be replaced with another Armoridon model. It'll require you 2000 points for M Plus Dungeons in order to obtain the KSM achievement. Because of how keys are currently split between the Fortified and the Tyrannical Affixes, you may be required to complete both of these affixes on two separate weeks in order to have an easier time obtaining 2000 Mythic Plus points. So it might be a good idea to start working on this achievement now so that you don't miss out on the mound over the next few weeks. Mythic Plus Dungeons also give you the hero achievements as well as rewards for each dungeon. By defeating each of these instances on a plus 20 key or higher, you unlock the portal reward which allows you to portal straight to these instances. But also completing multiple plus 20 dungeons will help you get enough points to get closer to the 2500 point achievement which is going to be the keystone hero achievement for the season. For those of you more interested in PvP content, we currently have the Vicious Mount, the Vicious Moon Beast, which will be rotating out for the next following season. You will still be able to go back and obtain the Vicious Moon Beast via the Vicious PvP Saddles, although those you can only start obtaining after you have unlocked the newest season's participation reward. Right now, there's a little bit of a confusion behind the Elite Armor Set. Normally, with every new season, the Elite Armor Set gets rotated out, with the Elite Reskin no longer becoming available for the next following season. However, with Season 4 being a holdover season that will borrow parts of Season 1, 2, and 3 as part of its new content, Season 4 PvP set does seem like it's going to stay the same as it was in Season 3. There is always a chance that this is just a PTR thing and that the appearance of the set is going to be different over the next few weeks over on the testing realms, but for now it does seem like it's a bit up in the air whether the Elite Armor set will still be earnable in Season 4. Though if you don't want to take those chances, you may want to start working on it now before it could disappear over the next few weeks. Finally, as far as PvP rewards are concerned, we have the Gladiator Mount as well, which means these last three weeks is their last chance to push for Gladiator before Season 4 is finally upon us. When it comes to raid content, Blizzard did announce that the achievement for defeating Farak, both the AOTC version and the Cutting Edge version, are going to be going away with Season 4. This did create some confusion amongst the community, with players thinking that both the Mount reward as well as the achievement are going to be retiring for Season 4. Though no confirmation has been given specifically, but if this is going to be like anything like Shadowlands, the achievement will be gone, but the mount will still be obtainable by defeating Farak on heroic difficulty until the next expansion. So if you're someone who really cares about earning the achievement now, you could start working on it early, but if you don't really care but still want the chance to the mount, there's a good chance you'll still be able to obtain them once Season 4 is here. The next thing you should work towards is getting your Legendary now in order to have it ready before Season 4. This is only going to apply for classes such as Evokers who had the Legendary during the Aberyst tier or Paladins, Warriors and Death Knights who were able to get the Ferrolath Legendary for the Emergisal tier. It's a good idea to keep working on that Legendary and try to obtain it now in Season 3 because you're going to be able to upgrade that weapon all the way to highest item levels in Season 4. New item exists on some of the Season 4 vendors that's going to allow that Legendary to continue being your best in slot weapon into the following season. The same thing can also be done for the Evoker Legendary that can also be upgraded, though some Evokers may find it much easier to start working on their Legendary once Season 4 is here, 
because right now most players are still trying to complete the emergency achievements and obtain all the emergency rewards but abras will become more relevant once season 4 is here thus making that legendary grind a little bit easier next another thing you can start working on right now is to level a couple of vaults ahead of season 4 Season 4 is going to be excellent when it comes to obtaining some of your best in slot pieces, allowing players to gear out their mains as well as their ults for some of the best items from every single raid of this expansion. And every single one of these class packs are going to be able to utilize their very best tier sets which have been chosen by the general community. If you're looking to experience some of the best versions of every single class pack for Season 4, you can start leveling a couple of characters now using some of the bonuses that are available over the next few weeks to make that leveling grind a little bit easier. This week we have the Legion Time Walking Dungeon event which will be active for an entire week. Time Walking Dungeons make for an excellent time to level a new character since they allow you for a faster dungeon experience that provides you better XP gains per enemy killed than most Dragonflight dungeons would. The gear scaling in time walking dungeons also means that gear isn't necessarily required, meaning you don't need to replace your gear every few levels but also you don't lose out on any player power as you gain additional levels, thus creating a much better and smoother experience. You can start queuing for legion time walking dungeons at a level 45 and above and they are generally faster than any other dungeon content you may be able to do while leveling a brand new character. We also got the Dark Moon Fair event that's going to be available before the launch of Season 4, which starts on April the 7th. It will last for one week just like Legion Time Walking, and will actually overlap a little bit with the Legion Time Walking event by a handful of days. During Dark Moon Fair, you can gain a 10% experience gains in order to make that leveling grind even easier in the process. Next on the list is Plunderstorm and you may want to start working on the Plunderstorm Renown rewards and try to finish it up early before the launch of Season 4. We know that Plunderstorm is a limited time event though no specific date has been given as to when it is going to end. A lot of the members in the community assumed that it will probably be going away after Season 4 since they said that this event is going to be here for a short bit of time. As of right now, this does remain less likely since they are adding a whole new additional mode to Plunderstorm being trios. So now you can queue Plunderstorm as a solo player, as a duo, or as a three player squad. And I highly doubt they'll be trying to retire Plunderstorm early if they're adding additional ways to experience the new content. Still, it would be a good idea to try to finish up as much of your Plunderstorm Renown track as possible before Season 4 just to be on the safe side. Right now there are plenty of guides out there such as videos on this channel that go over how to farm renown efficiently in plunderstorm whether you want to focus on pvp content or pve activities while trying to avoid players as much as possible up next if you plan to pvp for season 4 you may want to stock up on honor points early especially if you're looking to gain a competitive advantage at the very start of a brand new season currencies such as conquest points are going to be reset with season 4 but honor points never get reset, in fact they actually just carry you over. An honor gear in season 4 is going to be a higher scaling item level than the current conquest gear from season 3. Meaning that obtaining these items day 1 allows you to have a big advantage over other players who do not swap their items for honor pieces. So you should start storing up some honor right now through casual pvp activities such as random battlegrounds and even the weekly pvp quests. And you can do this on your main character that you plan to play for Season 4 or any of the alts that you're looking to check out at some point in the near future. For any of you that are interested in obtaining your Tyvan mount, you may want to start working on the World Awoken Completionist Achievement for Dragonflight, which was added in the patch 10 to 6. As for some players, Season 4 will be a fantastic time to return back to the game. Their very last chance to obtain some of the season rewards, gear out alts, play different class builds, and explore a variety of different content that will be available, as well as some stuff to hold you over until the War Within pre-patch is finally upon us. But for others, Season 4 is going to be the very best time to take a break from the game just so that they don't burn out. Over the last few weeks, the Dragon Isles have been sworn with players exploring out in the open world, with so many players trying to work towards the Tyvan Mount reward. And it might be a good idea to start working on this achievement right now while players are out and about within the Dragon Isles, because Season 4 could end up being a quieter season with less players, which could make it a little bit harder to finish out some of those group achievements. Also, right now it is probably your best chance to get some of the more unique transmogs before they are gone within Season 4. 
specifically when you take a look at the season 3 dungeon black rook hold which initially had relics that you would use for your artifact weapons instead of actual weapon rewards which has been adjusted for dragonflight season 3 to include two unique weapons instead these weapons are going to be the raven crest's wrath a two-handed strength sword which is obtainable from the final boss of black rook hold as well as the howling echoes which drops from the first boss of black rook hold which is a two-handed agility polearm both of these weapons are not on the loot table for these dungeons on mythic normal heroic or even time walking difficulties and only drop in mythic plus difficulty which is going to be going away with dungeons rotating from season 3 into season 4. And for now that's going to be my entire list of some of the things you should start working on right now in preparation for season 4. Especially if you're looking to maximize some of the rewards that you can obtain now but also some of the rewards you'll be able to obtain for the upcoming update. As per usual, I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this video and I hope all of you enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.